Yeah. So I'm doing some experiments against the brake, basically. I've got the brake locked on, and uh, I'm just going to... I've had a problem with it already, but we'll just carry on anyway, regardless. And go. Now you see it's running at low speed, and we're drawing it's about 17 amps. And I'm going to push the speed up. There we go. And you can see it's now drawing, it's a 45 amps. I've had it higher. I'm just going to stop it there. Yeah. So that's, that's about 25 horsepower, running directly against the brakes, of course. But the key to it is that it's very low speed, right? And um, proportionally, you see, the thing is, the way it works is, and this is, this is how it works, is that the power is a proportion of speed, right? So if that was going faster, say, for instance, if that was going at... Uh, so what was the speed it was going at? Let's just do it again. Are we on? Yep. Yeah. So it's going at one mile an hour. Yep. Yeah. And that's 50 amps, 25 horsepower at one mile an hour. So if you multiply that, then you get an idea of the amount, because the torque remains the same. Okay. This is the thing, is it has a flat torque curve, right? So the speed is relative, the, the power is relative to the speed, but the torque is a flat torque curve. So whatever torque it was applying there, it will be able to apply also at 100 miles an hour, right? Now, to give you an idea of how much power that translates to, so we were drawing 50 amps, which is the equivalent of about 25 horsepower, okay? Now, that means that if we were going at 10 miles an hour, like if I turned it up to 10 miles an hour, right, that would be 500 amps and 250 horsepower, right? Because the torque remains the same, you see? And uh, if I was to go at uh, 50 miles an hour, as an easy reckoning, right? Then that would be, uh, okay, so let's work it out. It's 25 horsepower at one mile an hour, 250 horsepower at 10 miles an hour, so you times it by five, which means that that would then be uh, 250, that would be 1,250 horsepower at 50 miles an hour because of the torque, you see? So, can this engine go at uh, 700 horsepower? Easy. <laughs> easy peasy. Of course it can, right? Because the maths proves it. Okay. So, we can do that. Um, the trick to having it, you know, go up to its full 700 horsepower is to make sure that you're not applying the full torque at low speed because that wouldn't work, right? So, and, and this is how things translate. You see, because that was how that would be how it would work in a piston engine car. Yeah, basically, that is providing the torque, right, to give acceleration, and that acceleration would actually show if it was up at speed, uh, would show as high horsepower. So, can this vehicle do? You know, um, basically, the 700 horsepower mark would be, I think, in this scale, would be around about 35, 40 miles an hour. So, in other words, it could accelerate. You know, acceleration is about torque, right? And velocity, top speed, is about power, you see. So that basically proves that this vehicle can apply that 700, foot, that 700 horsepower torque, even though we're doing it at low speed, right? I can release the bait slightly and then just make it go faster, and it will work, you see. Um, what about cooling? Well, in that brief run, I think it went up to... 60 or something like that and this is not degrees this is just a relative scale I actually think if it goes right round to 100 it's probably around about 50 60 degrees you know so it's roughly half so where it's at now which is about 52 is probably around about the uh, 26 degree mark but there's a it's not it's not proportional again let's have a feel yeah it feels warm it's like 
just warm to the touch. Yeah, I would say that that's probably around about somewhere between, in actual fact, by, by hand touch, I'd say that's somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees. That's what that feels like to me. Like a, a radiator that's cooling down slightly. Yeah. Now, I've got a bit of an issue. This is the reason why we've got a substitute power pack in there. And I think the reason, the problem is, is that um, the AC is actually very noisy. And, uh, sorry, not the AC, the DC is very noisy. And so it's uh, not, it's providing a very noisy signal here, which is the uh, DC output. And that, there's a big capacitor inside there, which is regulating the input. But the problem is, is that the wiring itself is dissipating a high frequent, uh, a high power AC signal that's modulated onto the DC. And it's blown fuses, that's the reason why I've got that in there. Um, it's blown the fuse. In fact, that shouldn't be in there, should it? Yeah, because <clears throat> we've got that power pack on. And so, and it's actually blown this power pack now. I've got a feeling that I'll, I'll open it up and I'll find there's a track blown on it or something like that on the, uh, on this side, because it's not really, I put a 10 amp fuse in it and it blew that, like unholy blew that. So that means it's obviously more than 10 amps. So I think there's probably a track that's blown on that and I have to redo it because I know the, um, uh, the transistors in Oh, maybe the transistors are blown as well because I think they're 8 amp transistors 800 volt 8 amp ones or something so maybe it's blown them too so I might have to replace those but there is some high frequency AC because it's got whacking great capacitors in it then it means if you've got any high frequency uh, any AC or that at all it will be in this wiring and it will be going through that fuse and I think it's blown that fuse so that power pack is actually dead at the moment and that's why I've got that, sub that mains one substituting in just to provide the power so I can run it, you know. So somehow I'm going to have to f deal with that. <clears throat> Not sure how, but we'll work it out, I'm sure. What I might do is stick a, um, a capacitor on it or something like that. I've got some 10 micro um, film capacitors that I could stick on it, which might uh, help with the uh, regulation. Might dissipate it in the capacitor or something like that. I don't know. There's some whacking great film capacitors in there that should dissipate the energy, but I don't know. We'll have to see. But I was really taxing it because I actually had it running at... Um, so on the meter, when I started blowing the power packs up, I had it running at about three miles an hour on here at low frequency. And I believe that the ammeter was showing it running at about 40 amps. Right, so 40 amps, that's about uh, 20 horsepower, right, at 3 miles an hour. Which is actually less, uh, that's, it's a torque, we're talking about torque. I'll have to work out uh, what the actual torque is, because you can, re you can factor it back into a torque uh, value. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how it does that. I mean, I can work out power, obviously, and then you can get the rotation of the uh, of the axles and it gives you the torque value by because you, you what you do is you divide it by the speed you see to get your torque value so it's obviously very high torque you see you know I mean this is basically got its brakes on as if somebody's standing on the brakes you see you can't turn this wheel it's solidly locked you know what I mean oh, no, can I? no no I can't you see so it's like somebody's it's if it's a Probably more than a handbrake, I would say. Yeah, because it's on uh, it's on the disc brakes, so it's clamping it on. And also, what I'll have to do is see if that actually keeps it stationary as well. I mean, I've no reason to suspect it won't, um, but we'll have to see just to make sure. Because obviously, I want to be able to lock it on, and we need a bit of a better mechanism around this as well. Yeah, in order to be able to operate it from inside the car. But it's locking the brake on, and that's what I wanted it to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm quite happy about that. Hmm. And if I, if I, what I should do really is release it and then try and get it to spin up to, say, 30 or something like that and get some current through it. Because mm. the torque is pretty high right now. Anyway, I'm going to stop there because I'm waffling.